These aren't tears. My eyes just went for a swim. I, I really contemplated if I should make this video or not. I thought maybe I should just, for the sake of my own sanity, not make this video to avoid any negativity that might come about in the comments section due to it. But I decided I really, really like to let my subscribers know everything I feel about crazy situations that happen. So I decided I'd make this video. Before you leave any mean, nasty comments, I need y'all guys to hear me out. Hear a girl out, please. Thank you. I have had just about, quite possibly, literally, truly, believably, conceivably, the worst luck in the world with hedgehogs. My very first hedgehog, her name was Nala. She is known to this day for her incessant cheering. She's just constantly cheering for you, even though she's dead and she's been dead for quite some time. She's still cheering for you everywhere. That was my first hedgehog. I got her from a local exotic shop and she lived for only two years and then she died of cancer. Now this video is just gonna go over something that I think is a very important topic to really understand before you go out and buy a hedgehog. This is talking about the overall health of a hedgehog and situations that no matter how well you take care of them, you may not be able to avoid at all. First off, let me say that if hedgehogs are illegal where you live and you still want to get one, I completely and entirely encourage you not to do that. The reason you need them to be legal where you live is not just so you can take them out in public or just so you don't have to worry about like someone coming into your apartment and seeing it or being reported. It's more so for the animal's sake. If your hedgehog gets sick, which which they like to do sometimes, then you will not have a vet in the area that can see hedgehogs because they are illegal. So there will be no vet and you will have a dead hedgehog. So I have had just about the worst luck humanly possible for hedgehogs. I've been getting my hedgehogs from the same person and that is where I made my mistake. I have gotten three hedgehogs from one person and that has been the downfall of my hedgehogs. So. First hedgehog was Nala, and she passed away at the age of two after having double kidney failure and cancer. So she passed away and it was crazy unexpected. She was fine, and then she wasn't fine, and then she was dead, and it was in a matter of like two weeks. I would have never known she even had cancer, but she was healthy enough to push some further testing after we found out she had kidney failure, so they did some extra testing, and that was when they were able to discover the tumor. Um, she had tumors in her kidneys and in her lungs. I was encouraged by everyone that it was not something that happens often enough to be worried and that in the future when I'm ready not to be afraid to get another hedgehog. When I was ready, I got another hedgehog. Now this hedgehog I got from a different place. This is the one hedgehog that I did not get from the exotic store in my town. Now her name is Solara and I adopted her actually from a very small local breeder. Solara was not able to breed with hedgehog so she wasn't any use for their breeding program because she had a chance of contracting wobbly hedgehog syndrome which is a hedgehog disorder that has no cure where it basically just their body gets completely paralyzed. Because of this they didn't want to breed her so they had her up for adoption and I decided I was going to adopt her even though she had risk because hedgehogs with wobbly hedgehog syndrome can still live. Although some cases are more aggressive than others, most of them can still live with it. They just can't get around as much, aren't as active, and need a little extra help. Me being the person I am, and I have the tendency to rescue animals and take in the sick ones and always pick out the ones that look like they're getting treated the worst, um, I wanted her really bad because I felt like, okay, people aren't going to want her. And... I want to be able to give her that good home. So I got her, and she is now almost three years old. Yes, she did develop wobbly hedgehog syndrome about seven months ago. It freaked me out and I thought she was gonna die because of how it went so quickly with Nala. I was like, great, it's happening again, she's gonna die. Well, no. Thanks to the fact that she was actually bred well, she's living perfectly fine with her illnesses, and although she has some problems getting around, she is perfectly fine. She's in a smaller cage because it's more compact and helps her move and navigate because she has things to lean on, and she's fine. She's great. A healthy hedgehog lives anywhere from three years to five years. Still short, but definitely not just, you know, two years like Nala. So Solara is coming up on the three-year mark, so I have to start preparing myself for, you know, any time could be the time for her. But she has lived already a very full life. Ideally, of course, I would love to have hedgehogs that live the full, like, five years, six years, like, long years, but that has not been my luck. Maybe Solara will live longer. Who knows? When I got Solara, the breeder told me that she was a surrogate mother. For any hedgehog that gave birth and didn't take care of the babies, they would give those babies to Solara and she would nurture them and care for them. Because of this, they highly recommended that I keep Solara with a uh, with another younger hedgehog. So I got Solara a companion from the same place I got Nala. Piper was very, very small 
and reminded me a lot of Nala because Nala was very small and she was very friendly and wasn't timid and that was the same with Nala. She had a lot of tendencies that reminded me of Nala and I really liked that because I missed Nala so it was nice to have someone that reminded me of Nala. I got her and um, they were companions. They had a really nice cage. Um, I'm gonna try not to cry in this video. Before this tragedy took place they had a wonderful cage the last few months of their life. They were in a very, very nice cage. They were always in good cages, but I like really, I went all out a few months ago and I got them a really large cage to make sure they really had the room for both of them. I was expecting to have at least Piper for another four years because Piper was so young. Like as of now, Piper would be a year and a half. And as you can tell, I'm saying would be because something absolutely awful happened the other day. And I'm gonna try not to cry. My hedgehog Piper went from perfectly healthy running on her wheel, eating, exploring, playful, happy, to dead within four days. At first, I blamed myself for having my male hedgehog and my female hedgehogs a little closer to each other than normal because I was moving things around in my room and I put their cages kind of closer to each other than I normally do. So I blamed myself thinking she got sick. This was before she passed away. I was thinking, great. Piper's sick because I forced her into ovulation because she was too close to Kovu. And I do have a male hedgehog, but I'll get into that one in a minute. Of course, I didn't think she was gonna die, I just thought she needed medicine. On February 5th, I walked into the room, I was keeping them in while I was remodeling my room, and I found Piper laying in the middle of her cage, which hours ago, that same day, hours ago, she was fine. So it's not like I she'd been there for days or anything. Hours before that, she was sitting, she was sleeping in her little igloo, perfectly fine as far as I knew. And I found her laying in the middle of her cage. So I picked her up, her eyes were rolling to the back of her head and she kept, you know, trying to like regain consciousness and her sides were sunken in and her spine looked all messed up. So I freaked out. I thought something had happened to her, like her organs because of me and I rushed her to the, the vet in the middle of the night and I stayed there all night. And the vet did x-rays and scans and told me she had nothing wrong with her, that she probably just bumped into something and was a little disoriented and not to worry. I insisted that that couldn't, I was so paranoid because of what happened with Nala two years ago. I was so paranoid, I was like, are you sure? Is there anything else y'all guys can do? And they are like, no, this is really, she's, she's gonna be fine. Just give her pain meds. And the pain meds they told me to give her are the pain meds I give Solara. So I paid $300 for that vet visit for them to tell me to t give her medicine that I already had at home. Um, I drove home and started giving her that medicine for the next few days. And then the same things happened that happened with Nala. I had to start force feeding her and syringing water down her because she wasn't drinking or eating. Um, for the next few days, I just kept telling myself it's just because she bumped herself, she hurt herself, she has something that she's just recovering from, so she's gonna be okay. And then on February 9th, I came home from getting these shelves and she was back outside of her igloo, flopped over, pretty much unconscious, in her cage, and she was cold. I picked her up and I ran her over some warm water to kind of get her to regain consciousness, and I noticed that she wasn't even trying to lift her head above the water. She would just lay in the, in the sink and let the water consume her, so of course I didn't let her do that. I picked her back up, rushed her back to the vet. This night, a different vet was there on staff, and that made me feel a little better, because I was like, obviously the last vet didn't know what he was doing. Hopefully this one does. This one knew a lot more about hedgehogs, and I wish so much that she was the one I would have seen a few days ago because I think maybe she could maybe still be alive. Sorry. Um, sorry guys. I don't like to cry. I don't like to cry. So, so I thought maybe she could still be alive if, um, I would have only seen this vet first. So I take her back to the vet and they rush her in the back, like emergency, they come out, they grab her and they rush her to the back and do all sorts of tests. They don't know what's wrong. Um, I told that vet about how the male hedgehog may have been a little too close to the female hedgehog's cage. So she told me it's probably like a uterus um, infection and that it can be completely fixed by spaying her. And all they have to do is spay her, but they'll run some tests to make sure it's actually an infection in the uterus first, which for some reason the guy a few days ago wouldn't do. Um, he said everything was fine because of the way she looked, like she didn't look like she had a uterus infection or whatever. They said that they had to keep her overnight and that I could come in the morning to pick her up. Stop crying. So, I'm good. I'm all good. I was sleeping. I got home that night about 4 a.m. And I fell asleep and then at 6 a.m. I got a phone call. I was too scared to answer. Like I had a terrible feeling in my gut so I didn't want to answer so I didn't. I let it go to voicemail and then I checked my voicemail like 30 minutes later because I, I don't know I was just really scared and I just wanted to sleep because then at least I wasn't thinking about it. So about 30 minutes later I checked my voicemail and um, it was a vet saying she had some results and she needed to talk to me and she did not sound like oh we have some results. Dr. Brown, Decker Animal Hospital. 
Um, I need to speak with you about Piper. We did get some blood work on her, so I need to go over that with you. If you can, give me a call back. It's 210. She wasn't like, oh, we just got some results. It was kind of like, I need to talk to you. I was so scared to call back, but I called back. And uh, she let me know that they got some results back, some blood work. She had, they had tested her kidney levels and they wouldn't even read. On, for one of her kidneys, the levels wouldn't even register, which meant the kidney was gone. And then on the other liver, or, and then on the other kidney, it was 75% gone. She had lost 75% of her kidney. That's all she really said when I called her. She's like, you just, you need to come in so we can talk about what we can do. And I knew what that meant. I knew that there was nothing they could do. I went there and, um... I had been talking about it already, like I started talking about it on Twitter and stuff saying she's gone, she's gonna die, like I was freaking out. And then when I finally got there, I kind of like, I don't know, I kind of just forgot. Like I started, I stopped panicking and for one moment I kind of just like had some hope that the vet was gonna tell me. Like I saw the vet and the vet came out and started talking to me and started showing me the blood work and for like one minute I thought, cause she hadn't immediately said we need to euthanize her. So for one minute I was like, okay, there's gonna be something we can do. No, she, she wouldn't say it, but I knew. Like, she kept just kind of hinting that what I need to do is euthanize her. Like, she's in pain, she's gotten worse, she's depressed, she's not eating anymore. She started throwing up all the food that they were trying to give her. She started throwing it up instead of eating it. They said she's just, she's not good. They couldn't run any further tests on her because they'd have to put her under anesthesia and she wouldn't wake up if they did that. So, um, they couldn't, like, test for cancer. They couldn't do any of that. All they knew is that she had kidney failure and that she was dying. So they gave me like, you know, as long as I wanted in a room with her and it was the saddest experience. Um, whew, okay, I'm good, I'm good guys, I'm good. These aren't tears, my eyes just went for a swim. I'm just, I'm just sweating through my eyes, it's hot in here. Okay, so the craziest part about all of it was that Nala passed away on February 5th, 2015 of double kidney failure and cancer. And Piper passed away February 9th of 2017 of double kidney failure and what I suspect was probably cancer in her kidneys. Piper got sick on February 5th, which was the day that Nala died. And they both died of the same thing. Nala could have lived a few more days back when Nala passed away on February 5th. Oh, shut up. I'm telling an emotional story. Back when Nala passed away on February 5th of 2015, they told me, they were like, she can stay alive for a few more days if you want to take her home. But I didn't want to do that because she was in so much pain. So it's crazy to think that they both could have died on the exact same day of the exact same thing. And they both were so much alike. And I asked, like, not intentionally. I did not do this intentionally. But I took a picture of both of them that looks exactly the same on the day they died. And like I said, I bought, I got both of them from the same guy, from the same dude. So there is a moral to this whole story, I promise you guys. Lastly, I have a male hedgehog, his name is Kovu, and I got him from the same place I got Nala and Piper. He has ulcers in both of his eyes. Um, he bumped himself, he hurt himself in the eye, and now they're just ulcers. His left eye is actually finally healing. It does look a lot better than it used to, but I'm pretty sure the right eye is completely gone. Hedgehogs should not get sick and be unable to fight and have an immune system that helps, you know, get them better. They, the hedgehogs should not just suddenly go into full kidney failure and die. Hedgehogs should not just bump themselves and pretty much lose their vision. Um, hedgehogs should get things like wobbly hedgehog syndrome and be able to live the rest of their life with it and not die. They should not get these issues, but sadly, so many of them do. Um, my cousin also got a hedgehog from the same place I got three of mine, and hers died. And hers died within months. And I'm pretty sure it was of cancer. So, moral of the story is, before you get a hedgehog, before you just decide you really want one and you know somewhere locally that sells them, and you go run out and buy one, you pick it up, or you know somewhere online that can ship them, and you just click buy and get it shipped to your house and think everything is going to be great just because you can afford the hedgehog. Please, please, please do your research. Make sure you get your hedgehogs from somewhere that have a uh, wobbly hedgehog certificate where they say they'll give you your money back if your hedgehog gets wobbly hedgehog syndrome. And that isn't because I'm worried about you getting your money back. It's because when they make those kinds of promises, it's because they were bred in a way where they aren't prone to illnesses. Please make sure you get from a family run local breeder or if it is a breeder that's out of state still make sure it's not like a mass chain that's breeding them out to everywhere because that is when mistakes happen that's when bad breeding happens you don't want to support mass breeding that's not something you want to support
know that even if you get them from the best place possible, get tamatai. African pygmy hedgehogs, the ones that we own in our homes, aren't the same African pygmy hedgehogs that exist in Africa. Um, this is a common misconception. People think that they were just taken from the wild and then bred and sold. That's not how it worked. African pygmy hedgehogs that we keep as pets are actually the product of breeding Algerian hedgehogs with four-toed hedgehogs and bringing them together and creating this species. Because of this, there isn't a lot that is fully understood about African pygmy hedgehogs. And um, there's a lot that isn't known about them. There's a lot of illnesses that, like wobbly hedgehog syndrome, that's not a thing that hedgehogs normally get. That was due to the fact that they've been bred in the way that they are. So because of this, they are a very flawed species. They have a lot of problems. They get prone to cancer. Just like rats are very prone to getting tumors and things like that, hedgehogs are prone to getting cancer. Hedgehogs are prone to wobbly hedgehog disease. Hedgehogs are prone to so many medical problems. They have really dry skin sometimes. They obesity. There's so many things that no matter how well you take care of the hedgehog, if you got a hedgehog that is prone to these things, they're prone to them. It's really important to realize that, that my problems were not a result of bad care. My hedgehogs are taken care of so well. I've been keeping hedgehogs for like four, four years, five years. They're taken care of so well. I love them so much. No animal I own is ever neglected. I check up on my animals multiple times a day. I, take, I keep their cages pristine. I, of course, feed them every day. I clean out their food dishes and their water dishes every day. Nothing is gone. Nothing is overlooked with my animals. I don't, you know, miss out on cleaning because I'm overwhelmed. I don't do anything like that. They are all taken care of to the fullest, as if they were my only animal. They're all taken care of that way. So even if you take care of your hedgehog that way, you still might have these problems, and that is so important to understand. I'm scared in the future to ever get another hedgehog. I'm scared because I can't keep going through that. That is the saddest experience for me in the world, to lose an animal and to watch it be in pain, like, it's so sad. Of course, all the animals I own are gonna die one day. I'm, I'm aware of that, but to die in such a bad way is not something I ever, I don't want to witness that anymore. I know for sure, for a fact, I'm never buying a hedgehog from that guy again. I think the dude's a bad guy, I just think he's ignorant to the fact where his, like, I just think he's ignorant to where his hedgehogs are coming from. Although there are some complaints about it, I suspect that more people don't because he often sells to people who don't know better. So they think when their hedgehog dies at two and a half of cancer, that was just crazy, but not something to do with the breeder where they got it from. Um, I thank you guys so much for all the people who have been so supportive about the situation. I was terrified to talk about it online because I thought people would just say I'm, you know, it's my fault and that I'm a terrible pet owner, all this stuff, but then I had to realize that no matter what people say online, I know what's true and um, most people don't think that. I have a very, very supportive, very positive, very loving uh, fan base mostly. Like, you guys are so... I see some, I see some fan bases that are just so full of negativity and y'all guys are normally so positive. So I know there's gonna be every, you know, I can't make every single person not agree with me. You know, there's gonna be some people that watch this and disagree, but that's okay, because for the majority of it, I know y'all guys continue to support me. I had someone tell me about Kovu when he poked his eyes out. Someone commented, this is because you have too many pets, it's your fault, um, you're a bad pet owner, basically. That's just a sum. They, they, it was a long post. How is it my fault that my hedgehog did that? How is it my fault? And they said, it's the same with your crested gecko and how they lost their tail. That's your fault, too. I can't tell them. I couldn't tell my crested gecko to keep his tail on. They also said it was my fault that my seahorse aborted his babies. If you look into how hard breeding seahorses are, you'll understand that it's actually not that unusual of a circumstance for them to do miscarriages. You can't say that someone killed their pet because they had cancer, unless you also think that that would apply to parents. Like, oh, your kid had cancer. Good, good parenting. Do you see how, do you see how that doesn't connect? Oh, your kid's appendix burst? Huh. You fail as a parent. Oh, your grandma has Alzheimer's? It's your fault. It's not how it works. So, it's not how it works with animals, too. Animals are their own beings. Um, well, yes, you take care of them. You can't control them completely. You can't tell their body how to work. So there's only so much you can do. I hope this video has helped people who um, want to maybe get a hedgehog and just help them kind of understand a little more about some things they need to consider. Solara would like to say goodbye for everyone. Solara, can you say bye? Hi.
So yes, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys for all the support and I will talk to y'all guys next time. Say bye!